Japanese traders are the market was leading the global crypto movement. Japan is back again. Japan is back again. But 2021, the market, the number of uh, open accounts, the growth was pretty much modest. Crime and money laundering and fraud and fishing. Why is that? Japanese are all about playing safe, uh, being conservative. But uh, if I use that in Japan are on the right, on the right, right. They come together over the internet and strive for the more common goal and try to make it better. これからウェブ X のバーベキュー会場に行ってきます、まあ、ほとんど全ての日本のクリプトプレイヤーが集まっていると思われます豊洲のワイルドマジックという会場が全部貸し切るそうですねまあネットワーキングというかね結構いつも話す人も多いかもしれないですけど、まあ、今の日本のウェブ3の熱気っていうのを感じてるんじゃないかなっていう Yeah, we are not a few making progress in Japan. We've seen the release of the Web3 white paper in spring, and there was a huge advancement in the, in the registration of stablecoins. Also,、uh, this year kicked off some big conferences in Tokyo and Kyoto and some areas in Japan.、Uh, take, for example, of IBS Kyoto.、Uh, some big projects even used Jojo Castle for this event,、uh, which is like unprecedented in the history of crypto in Japan. So, definitely, there is a hype. But when it comes to the Japanese crypto industries, I feel like we are stuck in 2017. The Japanese traders,、uh, the market, was leading the global crypto movement.、Uh, Japanese denominated、uh, trading volume, for example, is more than 50% of the global social at some point in 2017.、Um, even normal business persons talking about the cryptocurrency price when they commute on trains. And then we had Coincheck instead. That was 2018.、Uh, and basically, that changed everything.、Uh, Japanese financial services agencies basically tightened their crypto regulations, handing out、uh, improvement orders to almost every、uh, exchange.、Uh, also,、um, the image, the public image of the crypto became really negative in Japan. Uh, it's all about speculation, fraud,、uh, etc. So the compliance goes of the exchange is very tough significantly. And we are facing issues like token listing process taking over six months. Then imagine, like, how can they compete with other non Japanese exchanges when they can capitalize on the Chiba Inu trend, for example? So in this case, it was really difficult for Japanese exchanges to, to be very competitive. Sure, 2021 new market, we had some positive experience, but、um, the, the number of、um, open accounts at the Japanese research exchanges, the growth was pretty much modest. So we had like、uh, 4 million uh, accounts uh, overall in Japan at the beginning of the blue market, and then it only ended up 5.5 million、uh, around the end of the blue market cycle. Very little compared with like Kraken, Coinbase,、uh, where you know, the accounts doubled, tripled,、uh, maybe even like 10 times、uh, more. So、uh, it's pretty much safe to say that Japanese kind of missed、uh, the 2021 blue market. The public perception of cryptocurrency in Japan hasn't changed either.、Um, there is an interesting research by Consensus and Yuga,、um, basically saying that 
uh, when people were asked about the three main concepts they associate with cryptocurrencies in Japan, the answers were largely speculation, crime and money laundering, and fraud and phishing. Uh, and even more surprisingly, nearly 70% of Japanese said that they are not planning to invest in cryptocurrencies over the next 12 months. Later. Moreover, you know, I talked about uh, stablecoin registration, and that's really uh, highly anticipated in the Japanese industry. But uh, it is expected that uh, it's going to take a long time to finally uh, Japanese exchange or some other institutions to list stablecoins in Japan. And we don't know what forms of stablecoins will be like. And um, it's, it is expected that it's going to be in Q2 in 2024 uh, at the earliest. Yes, uh, DeFi users in Japan are on the rise. There's no question about it. Um, according to Chainalysis, there's um, 57 billion USD last year in Japan. Uh, and that's like uh, more than double the Korean number and close uh, nearly the Chinese uh, equivalent number. When you talk about DeFi in Japan, DEX or decentralized exchange is a big hit up. Again, based on the chances, 75% uh, of uh, DeFi transactions come from uh, DEX. However, when it comes to a mass adoption of DEX or DeFi, there is an obstacle, I think. One of them is self-custody. So basically, uh, this idea of self-custody, uh, not your keys, not your coins, is kind of a foreign concept to the Japanese audience. Not your keys, not your crypto. Um, because. Um, Relatively Japanese trust in governments and institutions, corporations, more than the rest of the world or the Western countries do. Therefore, the, um, the innovative uh, wallet solution, you know, UI, UX, uh, how convenient and easy it is to use wallets for, ja for the Japanese audience is very crucial. セックスを使ってるユーザーさん全員がメタマスクを持ってるかと言ったらイコールじゃないと思いますので、意識なんじゃないですかね、多分。ないですけど、FTX で辛いもしたでしょっていう。でも、もう半年とかを忘れちゃったみたいな感じなんじゃないんですかね、多分。その必ずしもそのセックス安全じゃないんだよと。で、自
of the overall uh, population. And usually, one uh, trader opens up uh, multiple accounts. So the actual number of uh, crypto users in Japan may be just like 2 or 3 percent, or maybe even lower. Why is that? Uh, this is because uh, Japanese exchanges uh, can be boring in a way. Because they only, uh, the top uh, exchange only lists like 30 tokens and with uh, two times the average cap and there are no stable coins available yet. So there's kind of no incentive for the Japanese uh, residents to use the Japanese exchanges for the trading purpose as of today. But like I said in the beginning, that may be changing because the regulations are getting loose in a good way and we have the stable coin law uh, coming into effect. Lately, there's a growing concern among Japanese traders about centralized exchange or sex. Uh, ever since the FTX collapse, uh, I have been asked many uh, questions by Japanese traders about the uh, the progress of the BYDX. Um, that's uh, that's a great thing. Um, also, the options for Japanese traders are getting limited quite recently because some of the uh, non-registered Japanese exchanges that they use for the main trading. Uh, place is suddenly um, cutting access to the Japanese residents, basically leaving them fewer and fewer options. ちょっとhave been definitely gaining recognition over the couple of years. Um, for example, the Japanese leading party called uh, the Liberal Democratic Party is uh, considering legalizing DAOs. What the Ministry Project team is trying to do is uh, to give legal person food to DAOs, which I think is quite a big deal. Here in the thing though, the definition of the DAO in Japan can be very vague. In a lot of cases, DAO is used to revitalize regions. So it's, it, it is about revitalization of villages or, or revitalization of islands and um, etc. But in my opinion, that's a little bit uh, different from what we mean by DAO globally. In the case of, let's say, MakerDAO, Aave, Uniswap, Optimist, and of course, uh, the Radix DAO. The way Japanese uses DAO is to improve existing operations such as uh, increasing the transparency of operations, uh, increasing the efficiency of operations, uh, and sometimes used for um, fundraising. ロム戦が多いと思うんで、海外のダオに実際積極的に入ってプロポーザル出せる人が増えると、もうちょっとなんかいいかなっていう。何か、ダオそのなんか我慢するミニマリズムとかありますけど、なんかどこまで人が入っ
But in the case of DeFi DAOs, it is about creating entirely new world and managing it. So it is about people gathering uh, from all over the world, uh, regardless of geography, age, sex, you know, basically. They come together over the internet and strive for a common goal. It is supposed to be a free place that doesn't belong to anyone. But in the case of Japan, they seem to be talking about a place that people already have uh, belonged to and try to make it better. Um, for the Japanese people, mainly the issue of their governance is a communication issue. So obviously there is a language barrier. Um, still many people in Japan don't use English for their business purposes. But I think that's not the, not the entire story. And um, there is this culture of perfectionism, let's say. Um, so Japanese uh, people tend to gather 100% of information to make a proposal or to even uh, give feedbacks. Uh, while in uh, the, the, the rest of the world, outside of Japan, uh, they are more relaxed, they are more comfortable with just basically talking about their ideas, even if there can be um, room for research. You know, if they have good ideas uh, in their minds, they just um, talk about it on Discord, Discord and etc. Uh, and based on feedbacks, the proposal got improved and then basically you know, uh, proceed that process and uh, sophisticated Japanese uh, tend to wait until all the information is there before making a presentation. So that is really a culturally defined set. There can be some room for education for the Japanese players on that side. But there are some uh, promising Japanese style projects. One is Tane, which is a crypto incubator, uh, recently getting uh, uh, involved with the DAO governance as well. And the other one is uh, Flaton Ventures. Um, it basically, they are the organizer of uh, DAO Tokyo. And um, they have a strong network of DAO experts in the world. WebX に参加してみてやっぱり気づいたことっていうのは、まあ、ディファイに対して結構みんな期待をしているけどなかなか行動できない慎重になっているっていうことだと思います例えば、まあ、バリデータとかもやっている、まあ、日本ではかなり有名なブルーチップカンパニーがあるんですけど、まあ、彼らっていうのは、まあ、まあリアルマネーっていうのはゲームとか NFT とかにあるのではなくて、まあ、ディファイに集まっているというふうにまあリサーチして、まあ、分かってるんですけどまだそっちの領域に踏み出せないとそういった印象でしたとなんで結構みんなっていうのはあの皆さんいろんな企業はあのきっかけ待ちなところがあるんじゃないかなというふうに思ってますもうみんなそのもちろんね日本の IP 大国っていうこともあって、まあ、ゲームとかアニメとかってのよく、まあ、あの話題に上がるんですけど、まあ、それ以外のこう本流というかあの、まあ、リアルな部分としてはディファイトが見ていて誰が最初に飛び込むのかどうやってうまく飛び込むのかそういったタイミングを探っているという印象です。